what's a worst aspect of an argument for you personally when perhaps say that argument has ended and you and the other party walk off and nothing's really been resolved? I think for me personally, thinking back to my life and the kind of engagements that I've had, I think it's the aspect of not feeling heard rather than winning the actual argument. Because of course, you can still hear someone and you don't have to agree. But when you felt like you've been listened to, it for some reason, tends to make all the difference. When I was growing up and the different members of my family may have had little disagreements, we would go through this exercise called the talking stick. And basically what happens is we sit around in a circle and whoever has the stick gets to talk. Each member would have a certain time period of how much they talk and when that stick is passed on, the other members would repeat what the previous person had spoken. In this way, repeating back what the other person has stated means that you likely understood and really heard what they were saying. Still, you don't have to agree with them because then it's your turn to talk and it kind of goes around in a circle like that until you come up with a solution to solve the problem. When it comes to conflicts in life, which are incredibly inevitable, we all have different perspectives. So when we are actively engaged in some kind of discourse and where we state our points or have our points refuted, it's always a good idea to assume that the other person you're engaging with knows something that you do not. Engaging in discourse, whether it's in the private or public sphere, means that you're engaging to find a solution or a problem. And if during discourse you can build bridges and find peace with one another, well then that's great. I mean, I think that's what probably most human beings do strive for when it really comes down to it. So then why do we really struggle in life when we're engaging with people that we may not see eye to eye with or who we may even consider our enemies because they may have such different beliefs or values to us that we can't find any kind of common ground? Why is it that our enemy always wants to be right rather than find a solution, so it seems. But before we go any further, remember back in the good old days when you'd go to the video store and choose between American Pie and Scary Movie 1, or when financial security meant that you'd go to the ATM and type in a four-digit pin to receive your money? And I can't forget where it was a revolutionary act to download a Bring Me the Horizon song from LimeWire. I know you did that. Well, times are certainly different, and with our lives becoming conveniently more digitally centralized, it's more important than it has ever been to regard our safety and privacy while we're online. For just $1.39 a month, Atlas VPN protects you online by encrypting your data and hiding your virtual location. Protect yourself from data breaches using their user-friendly data breach monitor dumping any of your potential sensitive information, which happens to be floating around out there prior to your knowledge. My favorite feature is the ability to be able to access geolock libraries. Because if you're a Kiwi, you know how mediocre our Netflix is. If you really wanna watch Top Gear, for example, but your country can't give you access, Simply open the Atlas VPN application and connect to the country of which library you'd like access to. Atlas VPN has other really great features such as avoiding censorship when you're traveling abroad, increasing your security when using public internet connection, and blocking malicious third-party links. Atlas VPN is available on all devices and an unbeatable deal of just $1.39 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee when you follow my link in the description. So Socrates is famous for saying, the more I know, the more I know that I don't know. And from what I gather, intelligent people always assume that there's always more to know, that knowledge is this endless pursuit, and that the pursuit of truth is this ongoing, boundless process that just never seems to end. Intelligent people don't generally brag about how intelligent they are, and of course always assume that whatever kind of situation they're in, that there's always room for growth and learning new things. It's like they say the most intelligent person in the room is the one who listens rather than talks. Because when it really comes down to it, are you speaking because you like to hear the sound of your own voice or are you engaging with another person because you're trying to find a solution or a problem? So when it comes to engaging with your enemy, or whatever you want to call it, the person that you disagree with, it's important to notice how they engage with you. If you find that during a heated conversation that 
this other person may not be really listening to what you're saying and might be shutting down your conversation or they might just be going off the rails in terms of their emotional response to what you're saying. They could be experiencing a cognitive bias. And of course, a cognitive bias is our subjective sense of reality. Without effective self-reflection and critical thinking, We use bias to confirm what we think we know about reality. So there's my truth, your truth, but then there's the truth. Or rather, what I would rather say is my experience, worldview, and perspective, your experience, worldview, and perspective, and then there is objective reality. Human beings tend to attach themselves to a belief. So when that belief is challenged, it can cause a lot of cognitive disruption. This could really shake up their system and drive them into overload. And this is where you see people reacting really negatively to information or they may lash out, they may call you names, they may divert to the most extreme side of their argument to shut you down. We all have varying degrees of what we think we know about something. And if we can stand firmly with what we know and be open to engaging and thinking critically about things. You're probably quite a level-headed person, but of course we're not perfect in every area and we all experience this kind of cognitive dissonance. While many of us are just normal people with a normal temperament and we are likely not all that argumentative when it comes to discourse, there are many who are. Whether you personally are trying to engage with someone currently who is just not hearing you and you can tell that there is a lot of resistance and a lot of closing off and a lot of I'm right, you're wrong, that person may be suffering through the kind of cognitive dissonance that is of the Kruger effect. The Dunning-Kruger effect is, in a nutshell, a way for everyone to feel good and above average internally because most of us are actually completely average. Dunning-Kruger can help explain why people feel that they're experts even though they know very little about something. A problem sometimes described by this graph. The vertical axis is confidence and the horizontal is experience. You see this all so often on social media. People who think they know a whole bunch of things who go online and preach and tweet, often finding themselves within these long, drawn-out arguments trying to prove their point. Obviously, it doesn't really make much of a difference, and all it really does is polarize people further. A lot of these people who think that they know what they're talking about or stand very firmly within their beliefs without thinking critically or opening their minds to other possibilities feel that they are morally superior. But moral superiority is not a virtue. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. People think that they have the answers to life, that what they know unlocks this magical gateway into fixing the whole world. But the key isn't to change something that is out of our control, to force people or to yell people down or to shame people into believing what we do. That is why cancel culture does not achieve anything and rather it's really a practice of moral elitism. I've told this story on my channel before when my father, grandfather White Bear, had been learning the ways of the Red Road. When he was a young fella, he was an environmental activist. He was in fact really close to joining Sea Shepherd. He wanted so badly for the world to see things from his perspective where he would jump in front of the big machines that were attempting to cut down all the trees. He found himself become quite bitter for the sheer fact that he really wanted other people to see things from his perspective. He wanted to save the world. His elders used to tease him by saying, Hey Bear, how many trees did you save today? His answer over time was mostly zero. I didn't really save any trees today. But then one day when his elders had asked him that specific question, Bear had answered, I didn't save any trees today, but I saved myself. So Bear still wanted to save the planet, of course, but he realized he needed to first understand the nature and the attitude of clinging onto belief and instead practice letting go and being open to truth, no matter what that is. Self-reflection is analyzing our belief systems and attitudes, especially in light of new information that may cause cognitive dissonance. And while those feelings are really uncomfortable, they're actually really important in 
our personal human growth. So while you may think I've been talking about your enemy this whole time, I've actually been talking to you. Yes, you. This isn't about how your enemy acts, but rather how you engage in discourse, how you can practice self-reflection and critical thinking as you're engaging. Discourse is incredibly important for human relationships because it is a way for us to form solutions to problems. At the beginning of the video, I talked about the talking stick. Really listening to what the other person has to say, considering their argument, discerning what they are saying and coming to solution. Are you speaking because you like the sound of your own voice or are you communicating with the objective that you're exchanging information to form solutions to a problem? Are you wanting to be right or are you wanting to be effective? So I hope you like this video. When I was planning this video, I was learning new things about myself and how I engage with people. Part of the reason I really love doing YouTube is that when I make videos, it gets me thinking about how I can be better, how I can improve the way that I communicate or improve relationships with others, and mostly relationships with myself. It's like, what I've said before, like an online diary. So anyway, I hope you have a really good day, night, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you guys all again for the next one. Bye.